there is a Jamaican aesthetic within all of us and I feel like it does come through and showcase sometimes like within my collections for sure. How did the idea for Brandon Blackwood come to you? I would say it's something was always kind of bubbling up even when I was younger. I would find my mom's clothes and like cut them up and make little fashion shows and things like that. So I think fashion was always something that lived in me and that was going to happen, but it wasn't until like end of senior year of college that I really decided fashion was exactly what, what I wanted to do. So yeah, I think that's kind of when I knew for sure that was going to happen. Which college did you go to? I went to Bard College. It's a, a liberal arts school upstate, really small, but it's fine, in the middle of the woods. The brand originally started back when? I formed the LLC all the way in 2013, but I didn't start anything uh -huh. until two years ago, 2015. 2015? 20, 20, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You are of Jamaican descent. Yep. Where do your parents hail from? So both parents are from Kingston. Um, I have family in St. Elizabeth. My grandma lived, I had another grandma that lived in Maypen. And I think I have like a sprinkle of family in Montego, but the majority is Kingston. Do you have a lot of family in Jamaica still? I do. I feel like a lot of my family now is like kind of back and forth. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I would say it's about 60 40. 60 40. 60 in the US, 40 at home. And then as my grandma and my grand aunts, once everyone retires, they're, They're back in Jamaica. My grandma and her two sisters actually bought land. Uh -huh. And uh, they told each other, like, when they were retired, they built houses on next to each other. Right. So now they all live oh, next wow. to each other in the country. So it's really funny. And now my grandma, like, um, raises pigs now. She's just chilling, like, best retired life. So, yeah. Would you do something like that in the future, potentially? You know what? I think, I always say this, I would probably one day, like, have a farm. Yeah. Like when I'm like older. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. Lots of animals, just peace and quiet. What is your favorite Jamaican food? I make a really good curry chicken. So I'd say curry chicken, rice and peas. But it goes, I don't think there's Jamaican food I don't like. The <laughs> only, you know, the only thing I, I'm not really into is acting salt like weirdly. Really? And that's like the thing that everyone's like, what? You know it's our national dish, right? I know. And that's the crazy <laughs> part. But like run down, stew chicken, all the other stuff. Yeah. I'm down for it, but I don't know. I can't. You can't get it. Why? Does it remind you of scrambled eggs? Yes, and I don't like eggs. <laughs> That's, That's probably like, why. Exactly. Okay, 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 okay. Does being Jamaican influence the things you do for the brand? I think for sure, especially when it comes to, I guess, the overall just aesthetic, the colors, everything like that. I think we as a people are just very bright and loud. Look at dancehall culture, yeah. look at how they dress. It's just. I feel like it's ingrained in every Jamaican. Like I feel like you, there is a Jamaican aesthetic yeah. within all of us, and I feel like it does come through and showcase sometimes, like within my collections for sure. For sure. I like the collect the pieces to be functional, like the shapes of them to be like really like easy, mm -hmm. but the colors, the patterns, the textures, especially with the fall stuff I'm making now, uh -huh. you know, larger than life, like us. You've also named a few after some places yeah. in Jamaica, Mandeville and I believe Portmore. the Portmore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all the bags in the collection are either close friends or mm -hmm. townships in Jamaica. Right. So you'll see a lot more coming up. So Ooh, really I'm excited to hear the new ones. And so mm -hmm. when does that drop? When does the fall collection so drop? So right now we're finalizing the styles. I'm going to edit through them. And then once I have decision made, it'll probably be around uh, like first, second week of September. Okay, 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 okay. So soon, we're like rushing getting everything done. Right, right, right. right. Mm -hmm. How do you, do you find time to sleep? No. Like, um, when it's right now, just making the pieces and things like that, it, I don't sleep. I go sleep at like 4 a.m., wake back up at like maybe 11 just to do it all again. It's like daytime is here, then nighttime is all back to the Right. So in a couple of years, things have changed so drastically yes. for you. In a matter of, I want to say two years? Well, yeah, might be like, even less than that? I think it's really been like a year, like the craziest right. change. Like 
every year the brands existed, it's always been better than the last, which has right. been great. But I think the growth was just, I think we had a 53,000% increase or 50,000% increase. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's not really normal for no. a brand, and especially <laughs> within a year. So, yeah. we've been riding that wave and just like really going with it. But somewhat of a great problem to have, eh? It's an amazing problem. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And then the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. And of course, there was the George Floyd mm -hmm. situation. Very unfortunate. And of course, as a black individual, you wanted to have a way of speaking out about racism am yeah. i correct i mean Was that it? yeah definitely uh -huh. right now i think the brand is almost at like four hundred thousand followers but back then it was like around like 10 yeah. and i still knew i had like somewhat of a platform i could reach people and no one was really working i wasn't trying to create i was like okay let's see where we go with all mm -hmm. this but there was a moment where I was like, okay, well, I have some of an audience. Mm -hmm. I tried to do like smaller, like charitable things, like, you know, get my friends mm -hmm. to like pull money together. It's like, give me like, not money, but uh, resources and like, water bottles and to protesters and take that. But I decided to make the ESR tote. And that tote was basically just like raise money. So far, we've donated to the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law, Black Girls Code, Stop API Hate and the door and basically which is an organization in the city so it was supposed to be like a title of and basically help like fight systemic racism like you know fight what was going on right and i made i think i think i made like five yeah 500 of them mm -hmm. i was like okay this is it what we make from it and in the first day we sold that i didn't think wow. it would be as much of a hit right right and it just took off from there and then you know i had a couple of celebrities wear them right. and it really just like became like and i walk. feel like the bag of walk the walk, 2020 the yeah it Fair. spoke to what was happening and you know its mission was like needed at the time sure. and it really just like kind of i wouldn't say it i wouldn't say it necessarily elevated the brand but mm -hmm. i will say it gave the brand a lot of exposure Right. A lot of people who didn't know me before knew me from this one bag when they said, oh wow, look at the rest of this collection. I think yeah. that's the snowball effect that turned into what it is today. Yeah. We're in Nordstrom, Saks, Bloomingdale, Selfridges, Kip, Shop Bop. Um, we're getting picked up by, well, we just had me with Browns. Yeah, Browns. So Browns, okay. We're like, yeah. You know, we're making our moves and going all over the place. So it's really, really awesome. To see. Right. And it's really cool just seeing, like, obviously the customer base was, like, very, like, US heavy before. Mm -hmm. But just seeing it now in, like, Canada, seeing it in, like, the UK, it's just, like, uh, France. We have a store in France at this place, and we're like, it's really cool yeah. to see, I guess, like, new people really taking to the brand. With the success, sometimes comes criticism. Mm -hmm. We know that. How do you handle the criticism? You know, I have to say, I don't know if you're into like astrology or anything. I'm really I am, I'm a Scorpio. What do you do? My mom's a Scorpio. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> I'm a Libra. Okay. And I'm like really super sensitive to like mean criticism, I'll say. Like I can kind of take regular criticism, but like it was, it's really different because now the brand is so big. It's like there's so many people that can voice an opinion where before it was like one or two. It's like, okay, I hear you. But now it's like, you know. 50,000 people that love me, like a thousand people are like, mm, I don't even like it that much. Yeah. And that used to hurt my feelings before, but I was like, you know, that's how I feel about some brands. I don't really wear it, I don't really like it. So I've learned that to get a tougher skin, just to like, you know, realize everyone is entitled to their opinion. So, right. So you kind of let it just do. slide off your back. Yeah. You were working in vintage before. Yeah. Right? Where mm -hmm. at? This was at Crossroads Trading in Williamsburg. It was. It was a job, mm -hmm. you know, it was, I didn't necessarily like the job, but I loved the people I got to meet because it was buy, sell, trade. So like, you know, you'd bring in your like gently used clothes, I would buy it and things like that. And then like resell it in the store. Yeah. A lot of editors and stylists and like people that work in fashion get gifted a lot of stuff. So they just would go and sell yeah. all the time. So I'm always meeting these people, seeing these people all the time. Uh -huh. I started to form a lot of connections with like mm -hmm. editors and stylists. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, when I would show them what I was working on, it was just like kind of a perfect connection. Mm -hmm. They've known me in a sense. I like built some relationships with them. So I think that job really helped me just get and definitely like my first articles ever coming out or anything. Right. They were all people who were essentially like customers. Then I worked at a jewelry store that did I sold engagement rings, okay. like fine jewelry. Okay. So that was a whole other thing of completely different learning experience. And then from there that's when I went completely solo. So right now I've done a couple like kind of previews before. Mm -hmm. Obviously now I'm in a very different place, so I feel like I do want to do it because I think it's now almost expected yeah. and I think there's a lot of eyes on me and the brand right now. Of course. So we are planning something literally after this, we're going to start planning our fall, kind of how we're going to mm -hmm. present it to the world. I think we're going to shoot for more of a good video though okay. and then maybe in person come next year. But So what's the staff compliment like now for Brandon Blackwood? What's like? How yeah, many how, people, much, how many people do you employ? I would say like seven. Okay. Seven are like in the main office, mm -hmm. but then we have um, all of our customer service team is in Jamaica, which is awesome. Oh, yeah. that's so, I'm so happy you mentioned that. Yes. Really? Mm -hmm. So you guys use like a BPO here yeah. in Jamaica? Yeah, and we like have meetings with them every week or mm -hmm. FaceTiming, and it's just like really cool to like work with mm -hmm. people, you know. So. All our customers are supposed to doing that's another seven people. We're gonna make it nine soon. Okay. And then um, we have a warehouse which is like a ton of employees. Right. And so a lot right. of people. Where do you see Brandon Black with the man mm -hmm. and then the brand in ten years? I thought and this sounds not really cheesy, I thought like when all this wasn't happening, mm -hmm. I would like dream of like being in this kind of like space right now. Mm -hmm. And I thought I would predict kind of how it would happen and I've learned very quickly that everything, every week is different for us, mm -hmm. every month is like a whole nother thing. So I honestly don't know if it keeps going this way, you know, maybe somewhere just like chill on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dream in 10 years, but I think, I think I'd be happier, I think I'm going to obviously be way well more well versed. I think mean, the brand will definitely be like a well oiled machine by then. Um, I know I'm probably gonna go into like other ventures as well. I also want to do some stuff with food. I cook a lot, so like I think there'll be it won't just be brand black with my C, mm -hmm. you know, under the black with umbrella. And then for the brand, I honestly just want to take it as far as we can go. I want it to be shoes clothing, just like everything I want someone to literally just be able to wear one day a full random black one outfit. So that's the goal and that's what we're working on. What would be your advice for young Jamaicans or people who have dreams of entering the fashion world? Know your worth. I think it's, especially when you're creative and you're really talented, it's very easy to get like almost taken advantage of. Know your worth. It's all right to say no. Um, and it sounds so cliche, but don't like give up. I feel like there were so many times just when I was building the brand mm -hmm. that, you know, whether it was like funding issues or just like development, all that, all those sorts of things. There were so many times I was just like, okay, maybe it's time to just like try something else. I honestly and truly feel like because I just kept going, it happened. I feel like your actions and your words are all manifestations and as long as you like keep continuing to believe in something that'll work for the matter so what would you like jamaicans to know about you that i haven't touched on you know i've never been asked that before. i know and that's my that's always my I to -do 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 question <laughs> i think i might go really deep Th that's what we're here for i mean i've always had a very I mean, I've always loved Jamaica. It's what essentially made me, it's what made my family, mm -hmm. how I operate, how I work. Mm -hmm. Everyone always says, you hustle like a Jamaican, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, that's just, uh -huh. I am Jamaican, you know? But I think obviously, like, being someone who is, like, queer, it's always been, like, a very, like, weird love-hate relationship with Jamaica. Not hate, but it's, like, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of, like, not really true understanding. Mm -hmm. 
And I think I was just more intelligent to making people that, you know, aside from that, like, I'm doing this over here in the States. I wrote to make the flag in my bio, it's never going anywhere, you know what I mean? I just want people to be able to put things aside and really just look at like what the Jamaicans here are doing. There's a lot of Jamaicans in fashion right now as well and what we're doing and like just to support us, you know? I think I think that's what I would ask.